Hey there, 405th, uh, Eva Curie here, yeah, aka Phil Shinner, and today I'm going to show you how to make a molded piece of EVA, oh. making the cuts in the back and keep forming it. So without further ado, I'm going to adjust the camera here and show you how I do this. Now the first thing you got to do is uh, have a good reference picture and uh, when you have that reference picture you'll see the marks that you want to make for uh, changing the the dimensions of the EVA which obviously is flat when you first start. Uh, one of the very important parts is is to create a template which I have here. Now this one's already been used to uh, cut this one out <clears throat> so it is obviously in separate pieces but when you're doing this don't forget to account for two things. One are the angles that you'll be cutting in. Obviously as it's a flat piece it's going to be shorter and smaller than what it would be when it's a finished piece with the angles cut in. So you don't want to forget your, to count in your angles. Also don't forget to count in the thickness of the EVA. That adds in 3 eighths of an inch for this piece here. So don't forget that. Now when you're doing your cutting of your angles <clears throat> after you've already marked off where you want the angles to be what I do is I always grab a nice sharp box cutter knife and I just make the cuts and this one's brand new so it's going to cut really well cut it at a 45 degree angle and for this line right here I want to make sure that since this is where this line is going to be and I don't want it impeding upon this flat area here. I always make sure that this cut is directly on this line. Then I'll flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. Ultimately, you just have to kind of get used to the depth of the blade. Uh, I just kind of got it set in muscle memory to know exactly where and how deep to cut. Now these lines right here, I've, I've only made just a small incision. This is not even near the depth and width that it's going to need to be to actually make the bend that I want. Since the bend is pretty extreme, it's a 45 degree angle. So this is just a starting point. One thing I've kind of learned with this is don't worry about, you know, going too deep because you can always cut out another piece of EVA as long as you have your template. It's fairly easy. Okay, so I've made my initial cuts. Now what I need to do is I still have quite a bit of thickness here and I need to bring it down to almost a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe in between, a, let's see, three thirty seconds. That's probably about where I'd want the depth. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put my finger on the back side here and I can actually feel the blade as it cuts in. So I know not to go too deep. Obviously, you need to be careful. Sharp blades, fingers. Want to keep them? Okay. 
And there's another thing you want to keep in mind is uh, not only is it the depth of the cut that you're making and the width, uh, but you want to make sure that it's going to be able to join and make a good angle. And the only way to do that is just keep on checking your work. And there'll be times when you're like, wow, I'm getting really close to the other side of the, of the EVA. And, uh, you know, there obviously is a too thin of a point. Uh, you don't want to go past that. Uh, you don't want to weaken the EVA too much. But also re uh, think that you're going to reinforce this with glue later on. If it does, if you have to make a really extreme angle. So uh, don't worry too much about that. Now you can start seeing this starting to already form. I've got my two lines right here. I need to work more on this area right here. It doesn't take much. Sometimes it's just a little tiny piece that's in there that'll keep it from pushing down properly. So now I've got these. This view right here, I'm going to start working on this one a little bit more. See that these lines almost made up, but it's ultimately the width that we have right here that's going to really determine where that outside line is. So now I've got the basic shape cut out. Let's gather up all my mess. And break out the handy dandy heat gun. I always use a low setting and I never go to the high setting. There's just really no reason for it. I'm patient. Uh, wait to see it start bowing and get that nice metallic look to the actual EVA. And I'll start flipping it. I'll do this three or four times. Now what I'm looking for is not only to see the bow, but I also want to see the lines start showing up on the other side. And I'm starting to see them showing up right there. Okay, so now that I've done that, what I want to do is I want to bend the piece, but I also want to force it downwards because that's the angle I want. Now I see see this ridge right here. I want that to be really uh, shown a lot. So what I'll do is I'll bend and push, distort, do whatever you can to get that EVA to be in the position you want to be in. I haven't had a piece rip yet, but I guess it is possible. But it takes quite a bit to make that happen. 
this angle right here is rounded, so I'll square it off, pinching it. And what I'm doing now is I'm pushing the two pieces together to pronounce this angle more, too. Okay, so now I've got my angles pushed in where I want them. Now this EVA is only going to hold for so long. Obviously, uh, if it has a lot of stress put on it, it's going to start wearing out these and it's going to flatten back out again. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hot glue the inside piece right here. I guess I should have started the glue gun before. Probably have to edit this part out just because nobody wants to wait for the glue to heat up. Unless, of course, I can think of something else to say in the meantime. <clears throat> or just drink some coffee. Yes, I have the uh, Uncle Psy cup. I guess I can find something else to talk about here. <laughs> so this is one of the harder pieces I had right here was to actually compound angle and a curvature within three, just over three inches. And so what I had to do is basically using the same technique of making the cuts, obviously to make a, a, a corner or an angle this way, uh, in between here and here, which is where the angle first starts, I have seven to eight cuts that I made, little V's. And obviously I had to make one line right here. But on this part right here where it's a flat turned surface, I had to make about 20 cuts in here to do this. And I'm not sure if the camera is really going to catch this too well, but right in here, you might be able to see, there is just a ton of cuts. And what I did, obviously, is I heated it up with the heat gun. And I made the bend. But then in order to keep this bend, what I had to do is I had to flatten the piece out onto the surface, make the bend, use the glue gun, the pour glue in between each of the grooves. And then what I did is I took a piece of nylon strapping, just like this right here, which I already pre-cut to the size I wanted it, and I just squished it down, and I waited for the glue to dry and uh, cool down so that it would actually maintain that angle. Another invaluable tool that I use tons of is the elastic woven strapping. This stuff is incredible. Yes, it gives you the stretch, but it also helps keep the pieces in place where you want them to be. Uh, one thing to remember on this is if you're going to use it, which I use it all the time, as you might be able to see in here, where you have your separation pieces. I didn't want a lot of separation, so I'm just going to show you on the outside what I do is if you don't want a lot of separation, you cut your piece and then you're going to glue next to the joints. Now, obviously, it's going to go on the inside. This is just for demonstration purposes. But you're going to glue next to your joints. If you want more separation, you want to glue further away from your joints. You want to glue, make your glue points out here. Or sometimes what you want to do is you want to have just one piece move and the other piece to stay right where it is. So that piece that you don't want to move, which would be this side, you glue really close to your edge. And this piece, you glue further out. That will allow the stretch to be able to move from that one point. Also, when I use the strapping, 
the one thing I absolutely am positive about doing is reinforcing. So after I've done glued it pe the piece from this side onto the surface that I want to glue, I'll go back over after that glue is, has uh, cooled down. <clears throat> I'll go back over and I'll put another bead of glue, making sure that it hits the surface that I've glued to, as well as over the top of the, the strapping. And that's not just with this strapping, that's with any strapping. Uh, one thing that uh, the reason why you use the strapping or the uh, nylon is because you want to reinforce something. Well, why not reinforce that reinforcement? So, and I generally try to go at least one eighth of an inch of overlap. Also, another question that was posed to me earlier today uh, was how I was going to keep this part from crushing down on this shoe. Yeah. And just for since I'm making a video right now, uh, what I did is I obviously made the one piece, cut the V in, pushed it together as I heated it up <coughs> to make the V. And then I cut out one piece and then a second piece. This one here not only has this angle, but it also tapers down to nothing here. And then this piece, I just cut the angle in, set them in place, glue them in. So now my weight should be evenly dispersed across the whole sole. And I won't have to worry about this thing being crushed back down. Okay, so glue gun should be ready. It is. All right. So obviously this is kind of just redundant, but uh, in order to keep your, your seams held properly, you're going to want to glue the inside. And I usually don't worry about going all up the actual side here. It's more about just getting the center piece right here, especially if you want to be able to move that piece a little bit, a little bit later on. But you really want that, that angle that you've uh, cut to be shown. Uh, the hot glue obviously is hot. Uh, we know that heat bends EVA really well, uh, relaxes the cells. So this will give you a sharper corner. And I know for a fact this piece is supposed to lay out a little bit more. So, let's do that. And there we have it, the finished piece. This part will go on top of the shoe. And we'll eventually have the mounting points for the rest of the hard armor on the outside. That does it. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to post them, uh, preferably on my uh, my thread. Greatly appreciate your time, and uh, hope you learned something. Thanks a lot.